Hello, everyone. You, too, can have a podcast. You have a passionate voice. You want to be heard. You can be inspiration to others. And it is super easy. You all know that I am not technical. So just download the Anchor app on your phone or go to anchor.fm and get started sharing your voice and inspiring the world. Hello, everyone. I am back. I am so sorry I missed you for two days. I really had the intent of actually doing the podcast because I was going to do it outside in this beautiful sound of nature, but they had no internet connection. So that was a bummer. They had internet satellite, but everything else was really sketchy. So I decided, you know what? I'm just going to put the phone away. And it was great. It was two days with no phone. And we got to experience what our life might eventually be like if we ever have a price for our home that's reasonable. (laughs) So you know I'm going to move to Tennessee. It's a little south of Illinois, about eight-hour drive. We bought land out there, we're looking to build, but we just cannot afford what the prices are right now. So back in March, we were supposed to build and we didn't, but this summer we did clear trees and get a path for all the utilities to go up there so that we're ready and waiting when the prices get to a place that we can afford. So it was really cool going to my cousin's house on 17 acres. They are really in the middle of nowhere. And it was so peaceful driving down this long gravel driveway and we pull into their house, which looks like any other house. It's not too farm-like. It just looks like a house that anyone would have in a subdivision. And it is surrounded by trees. They have a pole barn, a big open country where they golf and all of that kind of stuff. It's just so beautiful. We didn't turn on any TV. We just talked and allowed the sounds of the nature to just harmoniously play beside us as we sat on the screened-in porch. It was just so beautiful. And if you haven't sat outside and really disconnected, leaving your phone and your earbuds and everything else at home, looking around and listening and letting the sun kind of warm your body and your face and the breeze, no matter what season it is, we can all get outside a little bit and be filled with God's nature, fresh air. Put your feet in the ground, meaning ground yourself. There is some energy, some magnetism. You'll feel a difference if you put your bare feet in the grass lay down in the grass. One time I had a headache. Someone said, go lay down in the ground and the grass. And I said, okay. I laid down. It was like my head, my arms, my whole body was getting sucked into the earth. It was such a weird feeling. It was like I was a magnet and the, and the earth was like the refrigerator, you know, I was like, boom, holy cow. And my headache went away. It was amazing. Little tip for me in case you want to do that. <laughs> But that's not the point of my topic today. My topic today goes back to the readings. Ezekiel, are you reading the readings every single day? Are you reading scripture? And if not, I just want you to ask yourself, why? What's the big roadblock for me to open up God's word every day? And better yet, all you, ought to need, all you need is an email and the USCCB sends you the daily readings. And I just think if all Catholics read the readings every single day and worked on what God put on their heart based on those readings, with a billion plus Catholics around here, if we were all practicing, this world would be different. Different! Okay, but I want to read them to you. Read Ezekiel to you to remind you in case you read it and forgot. Verse 37, 1 through 14. The hand of the Lord came upon me and led me out in the spirit of the Lord 
and set me in the center of the plain, which was now filled with bones. He made me walk among the bones in every direction so that I saw how many there were on the surface of the plain. How dry they were. He asked me, Son of man, can these bones come to life? I answered, Lord God, you alone know that. Then he said to me, Prophesy over these bones and say to them, Dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, See, I will bring spirit into you that you may come to life. I will put sinews upon you, make flesh grow over you, cover you with skin, and put spirit in you so that you may come to life and know that I am the Lord. I prophesied as I had been told, and even as I was prophesying, I heard a noise. It was a rattling as the bones came together, bone joining bone. I saw the sinews and the flesh come upon them, and then the skin cover them, but there was no spirit in them. Then the Lord said to me, Prophesy to the Spirit, prophesy, son of man, and say to the Spirit, Thus says the Lord God, From the four winds come, O Spirit, and breathe into these slain, that they may come to life. I prophesied as he told me, and the Spirit came into them. They came alive and stood upright, a vast army. Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They have been saying, Our bones are dried up, our hope is lost, and we are cut off. Therefore prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, O my people, I will open your graves and have you rise from them and bring you back to the land of Israel. Then you shall know that I am the Lord. When I open your graves and have you rise from them, O my people, I will put my spirit in you that you may live, and I will settle upon your land. Thus you shall know that I am the Lord. I have promised, and I will do it, says the Lord. So here we are. You might be feeling like a big old dry sack of bones. It happens to all of us. We live our life. We forget about God. We don't keep him in the center. We go down our sinful paths. We fight with temptation. We question the word of God and we start seeking other things to make us happy or some meaning in our life or what is our purpose. And only with God can we have life breathed into us, right? Through baptism and the Holy Spirit. But I also believe that all of the sacraments are the beautiful ways in which our body can be renewed in the Spirit of God. Where we will come back to Israel. Israel is a name. It's not a country. This doesn't mean that we have to be in Israel or be a bloodline. We have been adopted children of God in this beautiful faith through our baptism. And Israel just means God's people. And a lot of God's people are gone. They're off doing their own thing. And if that's how you feel, maybe one day will lead to another day, will lead to another day, will lead to another day. And all of a sudden, you're just going to Mass on Sundays. And your life feels a little less joyful, a little less meaningful, like you're kind of purposeless. Maybe you're just going along. You're on autopilot. That is dryness. God removes himself from our lives on purpose in order for us to grow. Every time we're in the valley and we don't feel God, it's because he's challenging us to continue to pray to him and to continue to live the life that he commands us to live. Even if he's not there giving us all this beautiful consolation, it's a growth and we should be happy about it. That's why we should be embracing whatever trials we have, but asking the Lord to come into our heart so that we can deal with them like Christ would deal with them, not like we would deal with them. 
So for example, I had one of the most beautiful couple of days in nature, but oh my goodness, did I get attacked from hives. My nose is so stuffy. My, my throat is all scratchy. Everything's just blah. I think I have hives in my eyes right now. You should see the size of my bags. <laughs> it's really bad. But Lord, it was so beautiful. I'll take this. If it's your will, please take it away. But otherwise, I just want to suffer in silence and suffer with joy. And just be grateful that I had the opportunity to be outside almost 24-7. And I'll deal with what this, you know, allergy thing is throwing my way. So let's ask the Lord to breathe life into our dry bones and walk to him in prayer. Find 15 minutes to sit down And to ask the Lord to change your heart. Change my heart toward prayer, Lord. I don't really like to do it. But I know that I have to have humility. And I know I need to call you into my heart. So that you can give me this joy and this zeal. And you can help me get through whatever it is. If it's not prayer, maybe it's temptation. Maybe it's your attitude and your anger and your resentment. There's not a person that's listening to my voice right now that isn't struggling with something. And I'm going to tell you, mine is not going to confession. It's been like three weeks. That's a really long time for me. So I'm making the effort to go this weekend somewhere. (laughs) I don't care where, but I need to go. I'm not in mortal sin state, but I know, gosh, it's been a long time. And I've just got to cleanse the slate, if you will. And it's funny because now I have to go back three weeks. Like, what did I do? And just kind of walk through that whole time so that I can make sure that I'm covering everything. Once a month should be your maximum, everyone. Once a month is what is recommended, but obligatory wise, like what the Catholic church says is it's once a year. And some people don't even do that once a year. Usually that's typically around Lent. But the more that you go to confession, the more you're aware of your sins, venial and mortal, and the more you're aware of how much we need God to change our hearts, Because everything comes from our hearts, our thoughts, our desires, our will, our deed, our intellect. And we need God to breathe life into our dry bones so that we stand up and we fight and we fight with joy and we attract other people to us where we can lead them to Jesus. That's pretty much it. But if we're dry and we're walking around with no joy, no zeal, no smiling, no laughter, no appreciation for the moment that we're in and the life that we've been given and the meaning of that life, we might as well be a big old bag of bones just sitting there. I'm not attracted to that and I don't want to live that way either. So let's pray. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit. Breathe life into these dry, dry bones. The culture and the pressure and the things that we have to do, Lord, are taking over our time with you. We are getting weighed down. We are tired. We are sometimes weak. We are turning to the worldly things to self-medicate or to help us get through our days that are stressful, sometimes anxious, sometimes filled with anger. Lord, we need your spirit to be renewed in us today so that we can love ourselves 
and love our neighbors. But we know we need your love first and your transformation. Mary, please wrap us in your blue mantle. Take us to your son's sacred heart. We beg you to beg him to give us a spirit of joy and love and to please deepen our faith so that we have trust in you no matter what. And we can live happy lives with the people that you have put in our way. Mary, in your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I love you all. Find something more with God. Ask him to breathe life into your bones. Go be love. Go be light to this dark world. And have a blessed and inspired day. Hello, I'm Kendra Von Esch, and you are listening to my 10-minute daily podcast, Reality Reflections. I bought into what this world said would make me happy. Money, prestige, power, and hey, if it feels good, do it, because life is stressful, so party hard. Do whatever makes you happy. But that didn't quite work out, because I felt even more insecure, full of fear, shame and anxiety and never ever good enough then god found me and flipped my reality upside down and transformed my life and i want this for everyone so i left my executive career to help others find true acceptance supernatural peace joy and love that only comes from a relationship with god Here is my reality reflection for today.